Hello and welcome to Stai. My name's Andy. Thank you for being with me today to worship. Let's begin as we always do with our prayer of approach. Loving God, we're here to worship you. Help us to remember that you are here with us. May we pray to you in faith, use technology to connect with each other and listen to your word with eagerness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I hope that you're well wherever you are and I pray that this will be a time of uh, connection with each other and with God. So let's sing our first song today, Be Thou My Vision. Be Thou My Vision, O Lord of my heart, be all else but not to bit of our own story and think how that relates to the gospel truth. So this week um, we're going to be thinking about pruning. So I'd like your stories of pruning. Now that could be in the most literal sense when you've actually done that to a plant. Maybe you want to take it in a slightly um, a slightly lateral thinking way and apply that in a different way where you've had to cut something back, maybe in your life, cut something back so that it can grow better. Okay, hope that makes sense. So if you're with me live, please type that into the comments. If you're watching it another time, just think through what would be, what's your key experience in life so far of pruning? Okay, ready? Let's go. 
Thanks for sharing. Let's sing Be the Centre. pray together our breakthrough prayer. God of love, God for all, your purposes are more beautiful than we can possibly imagine. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Help us let go of all that holds us back. Open our lives and our churches to new seasons of humility and faith, of change and growth. Shake us up with the good news of Jesus and show us the way. Amen. I invite you now to type a word or two into the comments which expresses why God is good for you today. Let's pray. Let's sing again now, once again.
take a moment to confess our sins to God. When I say, Lord, have mercy, if you'll reply, Lord, have mercy. If we have fallen into despair, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. If we have failed to hope in you, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. If we have been fearful of death, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. If we have forgotten the victory of Christ, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may the living God raise us from despair, give us victory over sin, and set us free in Christ. Amen. Today's Bible passage, we're continuing in the book of John for a bit. So it's John 15, 1 to 8. Rita's going to read it to us today. And it's a brilliant, brilliant passage full of, full of depth and wisdom and, and grace, which we'll unpack in a moment. But as Rita reads it to you, as always, I invite you to listen out for bits which stick out, words or phrases that jump out to you, make a note of them and the bits that God wants to make alive for you today. So let's hear the good news according to John. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You've already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered and thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. Jesus has a habit of turning things upside down, of reversing the way that we expect things to be. And this passage is a wonderful example of that. Um, I want to start by telling you about something which I came across a few a couple of months ago called Lake's Dynamic Cycle. Okay, it's not as tricky as that sounds. Um, the idea is that in our world, um, there's a relationship between achievement and acceptance. And this is the way it works. So we start off by saying, if you're good at things, if you're an achiever, Now that could be, that varies from from person to person. Maybe that means that you're good at your job and you're wealthy. Maybe it's you're good at sport or you can play the piano or whatever it may be. So if you're good at something, if you're an achiever, then you're significant. People take notice of you when you're good at things. So achievement leads to significance. And when you're significant, you get sustenance. It means that people pay you respect and people... Um, notice you and people give you what you need. People give you the love and attention that we all need. And then finally, because of that sustenance, we feel that we're accepted. Feels that we're a genuine, valuable person. Now, this is the way that the world works, that our society is structured. It goes from the achievements we do, flows our significance in the world, from our significance is what gives us sustenance and because we're because we've got sustenance we feel that we're accepted and perhaps take a moment now to think about how that works for you maybe you are an achiever and you've got these things maybe you're frustrated because you're not the achiever that you'd like to be and you find that these other things are blocked as a result Now, the good news is that Jesus turns this upside down. Grace flows in a different way, so it completely 
reverses this cycle. Okay, so we start off with acceptance. It says that we are like a vine. We're like a, a branch on a vine. We are already in the vineyard. We are already in God's love. So we start, the passage starts off with us being accepted already. You're already in the vine. And because of that, because we're connected to the vine, we get the sustenance, we get the love and grace and everything that flows from God to us because we're in the vine, because we're already accepted. And because of that, we're significant. We're, we're um, you know, we're, um, you're, you're in the vine of Christ. That's a significant thing to be. Next week, we'll think a little bit more as this passage goes on beyond today's uh, limit. We're going to look at more of this next week of what it means to be significant in, in Christ's fine. And then finally, there's the achievement, the fruit, which it talks about here. But it goes the other way around. We start off accepted. Because we're accepted and in the vine, we, we get the sustenance. Because of that, we are significant. And because of that, we bear fruit. It goes the other way around. Oh man, that's good news. That's good news. You're accepted as the first step, not as the last step. Your acceptance is not dependent on what you do. And that's good news. Now, I don't know if you've spotted a potential loophole in that though. Beautiful and truthful as that is, there's a possible loophole which we're going to explore, which the passage also attempts to, to block up. The loophole is that your fruit doesn't earn you anything. Okay, you, we're, we're expected to bear fruit. We're, we're like a vine, it says. We're like a, um, we're like a vine. We're, we're part of this, this system which is designed to bear fruit. That's what we're meant to do. But our acceptance is not based on the fact that we bear fruit. It goes the other way around. We're already in the vine and therefore we should bear fruit. So what if we don't bear fruit? That's the loophole. What if we don't? What if we're not fruitful? What happens then? And I think Jesus is trying to explore this, this loophole here. Okay, now, um, firstly, what, what fruit are we talking about? It doesn't actually make it clear um, what fruit we're talking about. John's Gospel was written quite late. And by the time John put these words to, to paper, it was... Other bits of the New Testament were widely circulating around and John, we, we think, had access to those. So perhaps John thought it wasn't necessary to spill out what fruit we meant because it was already written so well in, in Paul's letters. I would like to suggest that the fruit that we should be thinking of that meaning are the, the fruits of the Spirit from Galatians, which, if you don't remember, are... And this is an important list to read out. I've read this list out more than once in style. And it always, you know, it's always good to be reminded of what the fruit is, what we're meant to be producing, what's our purpose. So this is what we're meant to be growing. We're meant to be growing love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, generosity, faithfulness, self-control. They are the fruit of the Spirit. Probably not an exhaustive list, but they're the things which we should be growing, starting with love. So again, the loophole. What happens if we're not these things, if we're not filled with love for others and the world? What if we're not filled with joy? What if we're, we don't celebrate the goodness in the world and the, the salvation of God? What if we're not peaceful? What if we actually quite like rifts and disharmony? What if we're not patient? What if we're short with people? What if we're um, urgent for things now? What if we're not kind? What if we're not generous, if we're mean, stingy? What if we're not faithful? Perhaps that means we're, you know, we're, we're not really dedicated to the path. What if we're not gentle? What if we're hard? And what if we're tough? And what if we're harsh at times? And what if we lack self-control? What happens if we don't bear the fruit? What, what happens as a result? Now, in 
the, the, the lake's dynamic cycle, remember the fruit is the last stage. Your acceptance is not up for question. Amen. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. But what happens if we're not bearing this fruit? The passage says that we need pruning. It says that we're already clean. This is verse three. Um, we're already clean, but the father, the vine dresser, prunes the vine so that the bits which don't bear fruit are taken away so that the bits which are fruitful can flourish. It's a bit like a bit earlier in John's gospel when at the, the start of this, this the, we think this was set with Jesus talking to his disciples um, in the in a meal just before he just before he died and beforehand he washed their feet. You might remember that story where Peter said refuses Jesus washing his feet, and Jesus said, I've, "You know, I've got to wash your feet to make you clean." And Peter, well, not just my feet, my whole body. And Jesus said, "This is important. I think you don't need a bath. You just need your feet washed." And I wonder whether there's something of that in this. We're already clean accepted, but we do need a little bit of pruning. Um, science nerd as I am, um, I wondered, with this, going back to the bath feet kind of parallel, you don't need a bath, your body's clean, just your feet. There's a sense that there's a bit of us that needs a bit of work, but on the whole, Jesus is happy. And I think that's quite a nice Quite a nice picture to have. You, you're basically fine, but there's a little bit of work still to do. And I had a look of what proportion of the body the feet are. And are you ready? Your feet are about 3% of your body mass. So let's go over that ratio. You're 97% there. There's 3% that needs work on, 3% that needs pruning, which is why I've called this a little bit of pruning today. Um, John Wesley took this idea as well. He said there are different types of, um, of salvation. There's justification, where you're made clean, where you're saved, where you're grafted into the vine. That's being a Christian, deciding to follow Jesus. You're justified. You're 97% there, perhaps. But then the following 3% is what he calls sanctification. How we have to go through an ongoing process of pruning. Um, to get rid of the, the last 3% that is not doing what it should do, the last 3% that's not loving, joyful, peace-filled, patient, kind, generous, faithful, gentle, and self-control. Uh, self-controlled. If we're, the, the bit of us which still needs a bit of work might need some pruning. There may be bits of us, not physically, but bits of our character which need to be snipped off. One day, they're gonna go. You can't take these things with you into the life to come. They're gonna go one day. So the vine dresser, the gardener, is in the act of pruning us now. And I wonder how that makes you feel. I wonder if it makes you feel nervous. I wonder if that makes you feel anxious of what you're going to have to get rid of. The thing is that Jesus, uh, says that the father is the vine dresser and he does things well. He'll do it in the right time, in a gentle way, so that you can bear it. He never takes us through things that we cannot bear. But there's a 3% job. We, you know, approximately 3% <laughs> of us needs pruning. So we should be ready for the act of the spirit doing that in us. We need a little bit of pruning. Remember, you are accepted. You are grafted into the vineyard. You are accepted, full stop. Because of that, you get the sustenance from God. The goodness, the grace, the love flows to you, independent of this, this last 3%. Because of that, you are significant. Without spoiling next week's, you are a friend of God. And because of that, we should bear fruit. We should have the fruit in our lives for, for other people to see, to witness and to benefit from. We should be a blessing to the world. So let's 
be willing to submit ourselves to the, the holy secateurs, cutting away the bits of us which are pointless and a waste of energy so that we can channel our strength and our time and our, op and our, and our gifts and the things that we've made to do. Let's make sure that we're doing them for the things which grow fruit for the healing of the nations. Amen. One, let's, let's think about the wheel of grace while we're at it. Um, this is, a, of course, showing ways in which we can show our fruit to the world. That list of fruit um, can take shape in these things. So I wonder how you're getting on with this. I wonder how you got on with the last challenge you saw. Are you ready? We can do two. So. This week's challenge on the Wheel of Grace, number one, is, give it a good spin, present. So, some kind of a gift for someone. Doesn't have to be expensive, but some kind of a gift to bless someone with knowing that you love them and you surprise them with your grace. Okay, you ready? And the second one, it is pencil. So again, we had this before, either write to someone or draw someone a picture and surprise someone with a little handwritten note or a drawing so that they can, yeah, they, they know that you love them and they know that you know, your, love and gentle, your love and generosity is flowing out of you. Okay, so let's see how you get on this week. All right, let's sing again now. Breathe. See 
free for the needs of the world. As always, if you would like, if you're here with me live and you'd like everybody to pray for anyone you know, please type their initials into the comments so that we can all join in, but we also preserve their, their anonymity. When I say, Lord in your mercy, if you will reply, hear our prayer. In the power of the resurrection, we offer our prayers to God. We remember, O oh Lord, in your love, the church throughout the world. May your whole church know your power and be a sign that Christ is risen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember in your love the world that you have made. Those who seek a fair and proper use of the world's resources, those who strive for justice and peace among the nations. May the whole earth be transformed by mercy and rejoice in hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember in your love those who suffer, the victims of violence and injustice, and those who mourn. May all in need find comfort, strength, and freedom in the living Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember in your love those who have died, those who have confessed the faith and those whose faith is known to you alone. May all your children receive grace and light according to their needs and come at last to share with all the saints in life eternal. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As our Saviour taught his disciples, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. So may you know that you are accepted that your acceptance is not dependent on the things that you do. But may you also know that God wants to prune you so that you bear more love and more joy and more peace and more patience, that you are full of the fruit of the Spirit. And maybe that needs a little bit of pruning. May the blessing of God the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you now and stay with you forevermore. Amen.